welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 2nd, 2014, and we have some breaking news out of Fort Hood. KCEN-TV reports an active shooter at Fort Hood. We have reports of one dead, eight injured in the shooting. The National Terror Alert Center put out this two days ago. FBI military hunt ex-Army recruit suspected in plotting Fort Hood-inspired jihad. Now, this is news out of, out of Fox a couple days ago. And they said the gentleman known as Booker told his friends that he had intentions to commit jihad. And according to the article, Booker was also known as Muhammad Hassan, was recruited by the U.S. Army in Kansas City and was scheduled to report for basic training in April, but was discharged last week after law enforcement learned about his activities, his alleged activities to commit the jihad. And it says both the FBI and the 902nd Military Intelligence Group at Fort Leavenworth are involved in the hunt, but contrast that with the initial reports of the shooting. KCEN reported that it was a white male, uh, likely in a combat uniform, carrying a 45 caliber handgun. So uh, reports are contradictory at this at this point. We can't say for sure that this uh, Hassan character is the person who carried out the the alleged attacks, but it's definitely uh, definitely something to look at. And you know, this guy is on the loose. They think he has reason to attack Fort Hood, and now Fort Hood has been attacked. So stay tuned to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv as we give you more updates. Going on to some other news now. Reports, EPA tested deadly pollutants on humans to push the Obama administration agenda. This isn't the first time we've talked about this. InfoWars was telling you about it back in 2012. EPA sued over illegal experimentation on human subjects. And Alex Jones talked about this today on the Alex Jones Radio Show and was joined by David Knight on this very topic. This is coming back into the news because they're trying to push this wood smoke regulation. This is something that's been going around for quite some time with the EPA. Actually, going back to September of 2011, we have a clip that I want to play in just a second here. This is EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson, and she goes before Congress, and it was already set up with uh, Representative Markey that she's going to tell everybody just how dangerous these fine particulate matter is. Let's go to that clip. Yeah. Cumulatively, what are the benefits of cleaning up particulate matter? Uh, does that help or hurt our efforts to battle cancer, How, uh, to, to battle the impact so it, cancer. Uh, it has upon the health you know of the people in our country. Particulate matter or soot causes premature deaths. It doesn't make you sick. It's directly causal to dying sooner than you should. So the impacts of delaying efforts, cost-effective efforts, I might add, to address particulate matter are more people dying sooner than they should. How would you compare it to the fight against cancer? Reducing um, particulate matter. Uh, yeah, I was brief not long ago. If we could reduce particulate matter to healthy levels, it would have the same impact as finding a cure for cancer in our country. Can you say that sentence one more time? <laughs> yes, sir. If um, we could reduce particulate matter to levels that are healthy, we would have an identical impact. They talk to us like we're two. She's reading her talking points cancer. about That's cancer. That's a pretty good cumulative. Meanwhile, they're well, putting cancer viruses in all the major, the major vaccines, vaccines on record. Yeah. You know, he starts this, he's already got her talking point set up where she's going to tell everybody that particulate matter is killing as many people as cancer. And he even mentioned that at the very beginning, he says cancer. And so then she repeats that claim. Now, at the same time she's giving this congressional testimony, the EPA in North Carolina, at the University of North Carolina, is hooking people up to diesel exhaust fumes out of a diesel truck. They got a pipe running in, they put them in a little closed room, and they put a mask over their face, and they're feeding them diesel fuel. And they lie to them and tell them it's safe. Exactly. Now, so that happened now uh, in September of 2012. So that congressional testimony was 2011. At the time, they're exposing people to levels that the EPA has already said uh, were, were fatal. They're 50 to 70 times, in some cases higher than that, levels of exposure to this uh, that they've already determined were fatal. Border Patrol terrorizes mom and kids with a knife and taser. You know, it's just how they do things now in the United States of America. While the Obama administration allows tens of thousands of violent illegal immigrants to go free in the United States without deportation every year, an American woman and her two children were terrorized by Border Patrol agents who threatened to taser her if she did not consent to a search of her vehicle before slashing her tires. And you can go to Infowars.com and hear the woman's testimony for herself. Basically, she is driving her car, two kids in the back. It's pulled over by the Border Patrol agent. Miss, uh, can you step out of your vehicle? Sir, why do you want me to step out of my vehicle? Miss, can you step out of your vehicle? Sir, why do you need me to step out of my vehicle? 
at which point she says the officer produced a taser. Miss, do I need to tase you to get out of the vehicle? No, sir, you don't. Miss, do I need to take this knife and cut off your seatbelt to get you out of the vehicle? No, no, sir, you don't. Uh, at which point she left the vehicle, I would say under voluntary circumstances, but she felt it was the best thing for her safety and also that of her children. And just to make sure she was a good little slave from now on, they slashed her tires. And that's how they did, according to her own testimony. So you can go to Infowars.com and see how these, not only police officers, but now we have Border Patrol out here acting very badly. And I'm sure there are plenty of good Border Patrol agents out there, but this is definitely a black eye, and I hopefully, hopefully this will be addressed sooner than later. And something that needs to be addressed right now, the situation in Albuquerque. Because you remember last week, the week before, they uh, unfortunately killed a homeless gentleman who was camping. You know, of all the deadly, horrible things you could do, a man camping needs a SWAT team to come remove him from a camping ground. They shot the man multiple times. Uh, he was attacked by a dog after they said they would allow the man just to walk free on his own and also shot him close range with a beanbag gun. The man died from his injuries after that. Now we have a new shooting, Fury, as U.S. Marshals shoot unarmed man, then confiscate cell phones of witnesses. And the local news reports that the Marshals were trying to apprehend a fugitive in a truck who, who had warrants out for charges of aggravated battery and child abuse. When the man attempted to get away from the marshals, they opened fire according to the county sheriff's report. But the witnesses have a very different account of the, of the uh, events of that day. They say that the man stepped out of his vehicle and was immediately shot by the marshals, which to me would make more sense because if you go to the video on Infowars.com, we won't show it because it has some uh, graphic content in it. But if you go watch that video for yourself, you'll see that the man was shot right outside his door. So it looks like to me he may have just stepped right outside of his door and was shot right there because the officers, the marshals, say that the man ran down the street, but he was shot right next to his vehicle. So I was like, well, he didn't run too fast or get too far for him to be taken off running like they said he did. And of course, they confiscate the, uh, they confiscate the footage like they did in the shooting in San Francisco, like they did at the Boston bombing. They love to confiscate your footage and you may get it back, you may not. And that's the situation going on in Albuquerque. This stuff definitely needs to stop. And somebody said they want to put a stop to child abuse, so now they have this new law, this Cinderella law. And it said the new law could target parents who drink alcohol in front of their kids as child abusers. I know that sounds pretty ridiculous. Let's see what else it has to say. Under the new Cinderella law, denying love to children could be characterized as a crime under the same league as physical or sexual abuse. The definition of such abuse being solely in the hands of the state opens up a Pandora's box of potential behaviors that could warrant government interference in the family. And that's exactly right, because you recall that uh, somebody was labeled an unfit parent because they wouldn't go give their child a Happy Meal. They said, son, you don't need all this GMO, high fructose crap. Uh, let's eat some real food. No. So now, going after going to the shrink, the man's been labeled a child abuser, uh, labeled an unfit parent. And that's what's going to happen here if they pass this Cinderella law. And right now it's being considered over there in the UK. But something like this could happen here because you recall we had a guest on a few weeks ago on the Alex Jones radio show who had their child taken away because the parents were users or growers of marijuana. And they said because somebody may break into your house because you have marijuana, we're going to take away your child right now. Not to mention the flimsy uh, excuse that the state will decide what is abuse in your household. It's just another step to uh, have Big Brother in your household, and I definitely suggest you do everything to keep Big Brother out. Supreme Court strikes down overall limit on campaign giving. So if you think uh, the political system is corrupt right now as it is, you ain't seen nothing yet. Under the current limit, a donor can't give more than 123000 to a candidate, party, or political action committee. Of that, 48000 can go directly to candidates. That means that if someone wanted to give the maximum donation, he could only contribute to nine candidates. But the kicker about this is it creates a loophole, which will allow individuals to contribute millions of dollars to a political party or to a candidate's campaign, just as Breyer wrote. So that's exactly right. Because you recall in the last election cycle for president, they didn't want people such as Gary Johnson going to the political debates, even though he had an iota of the backing, an iota of the funding. So what do you have to be afraid of if you guys are all that, Republicans and you Democrats, you're, you're all that, why are you scared of a guy like Gary Johnson? But now under this new system with these laws removed, now you can get all your candidates uh, for, your Democrat party, for your Democratic Party to your Republican Party, whatever party, and you can get all you guys up and they all say, hey, we're going to go with candidate X. Let's pull our resources and give um, all the money, or at least most of the money, to candidate X for the big campaign push. Now you can do that with these current laws, uh, with these laws being struck down. So uh, if you didn't think the system was corrupt enough, 
you know, this is why you have to get involved at your local level, because yes, there is a lot of corruption at the top, but you can do things, you can affect change in your local communities, so that's when you need to run for office and really try to affect some change. And, you know, we're at the point now things have changed. We do have the health care law now. And now Ms. Pelosi is saying Obamacare, it's what the founders would have wanted. It's so heartwarming for those of us who work so hard so that many more people in our country would have access to affordable, quality health care. There are those who are critics and have been bumps in the road, but they've only been turbulence. They have not been an obstacle to the American people have a healthier life. But our founders wanted for them life, healthy life, liberty, the freedom to pursue their happiness, not job locked. And I love the guy in that video. She says, it's what the founders would have wanted. He's like, huh? What are you like? What is she talking about? That's the same thing. I'm like, what are you talking about? The, the founders would want you to stop all that insider trading. That was CBS News, Miss Pelosi. I'm sure you've seen the episode of 60 Minutes. And we'll end tonight with this GM accused of playing Russian roulette with the driver's lives. Well, that's a very important issue. Survivors and families of victims of fatal road accidents connected to defective ignition switches in General Motors vehicles slammed the automaker Tuesday as lawmakers tried to piece together why it took the company more than a decade to issue recalls despite repeated red flags. Well, it seems pretty simple to me. It just seems like they didn't want to replace the parts. They didn't want the public outcry of having defective vehicles on the road, so they just let it slip and now they're paying the piper for it. Uh, there you go, GM. Well, that's it for this segment of the InfoWars Nightly News, but the show is far from over because after this break, we'll have a special report from a true feminist, Leanne McAdoo. She's talking about some of the shenanigans going on at your major networks. And then also after that, I'll have my preview of X-Men Days of the Future Past. And you say, like, why would you spend time talking about a comic book? Well, <laughs> if you go watch this movie or you see the trailer, a lot of the things that these guys wrote back in the 1980s as fictional police state measures are now real-life, true, working things. And if, you, if you're skeptical of that, stick around and see that. It seems like these guys need to pay these, uh, these comic book writers royalties. They need to pay Chris Claremont. They need to pay uh, Alan Moore, who does Watchmen and V for Vendetta, because they're ripping off straight from the comic books. And we have something at the InfoWars shop that's not a comic book. It's the new InfoWars magazine. This month's edition is The War on Women. You can see uh, uh, the modern-day Maryland. You know, I'm, I'm personally a fan of uh, women who don't look like Chris Jericho and drag, but, you know, to each his own. You can get the InfoWars magazine at the InfoWarsShop.com. It funds our broadcast. And another thing that funds our broadcast is PrisonPlanet.tv. You can get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the rants, the nightly news, the special reports, all that on PrisonPlanet.tv. So stay tuned after this break for more special reports. facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds.